So today we'll be talking about the, let me go to the page, uh, project um, schedule management, essentially, which uh, to me, project schedule management is really about uh, managing the focus of uh, your own focus and your team's focus. No? So, so here we'll be talking about some tools in project schedule management, um, some <laughs> estimation techniques, and then how to choose a project task management tool, which is what um, is the main, what you call this. My main application of schedule management is really in terms of helping my team, my project team, focus on the tasks for a specific time period. So, um, so that's basically what I, how I see project schedule management. So you are planning out what will, what do you plan to focus on in the future in this project? And then um, this is based on your cadence, your time period. So I'll talk about that later when we talk about the calendar. Uh, the tools here that I normally use are the milestone chart, the calendar, and for projects which require a lot of, um, or projects that has a lot of dependencies, I also use the Gantt chart. So. The milestone chart is really, we talked about this during the, the discussion on the project charter, because this is a tool for presenting an overview of the project. You could use it for your pitch. You could use it for your presentation of the project, a high level presentation. You could use it to give your team a high level view of what will happen in the next weeks, in the next months, in the next years of the project. So my usual format here is simply a table, one column showing milestones. Milestones are, are specific points in the projects. In the project, they are not tasks. They are not work uh, packages. They are like maybe a completion of a work package, a completion of a task that could be a milestone or a start of a task. It's like a gate. So it, uh, it just a, it's just a arbitrary um, location in the project time-wise, which you pick in your project. So that just to give people an idea of where you are. So, and then for the actual management of focus, what I normally use is the calendar. So in the past, this is, uh, I used to use an actual calendar, you know, like uh, with the, the table with, you know, Monday to, Monday to Sunday and all the days there. But in Rome, I, I use the link references of certain dates. Um, for instance, week of you know uh, April twenty. What's was Monday twenty six or something like that. So, I my, my my in my in my workflow, I plan the week on Mondays. So I link reference the Mondays when I plan out. Um, the tasks for the week. So I could help my um, team focus on what tasks we will focus on that week. So, uh, so the, the, the way I do this in Rome really depends on the, what they call focus cadence. So, which is dependent on how often you meet your team. So if you meet your team weekly, you want the cadence to be weekly, meaning you want to set the tasks, the tasks to focus on on a weekly basis. If it is a monthly meeting, you set it on monthly, and then sometimes you can start monthly and then progress to make it weekly. And when the, for instance, in an event, at some point you will, you know, as you're preparing for the event and you're, you are becoming more proximate to it. So you become, the, the meetings become daily and a few days before the actual event, you meet them, you know, maybe a few day, a few times a week, or like you, you meet, um, you have one on ones your teammates, you know, several times a day, until the day itself. So, um, so that's a key uh, consideration on how you will structure your calendar. So in Rome, which in Rome is just like a. So the link references to the 
work-based structure, um, work packages under a certain date. So I'll show it to you later. So the Gantt chart is something I use for projects with a lot of dependencies. So I should actually show screenshots here in the actual book. Anyway, I'll add this, add this here. Um, you're familiar with, with each of these, uh, Bruno, no? the milestone chart, the calendar, and the Gantt chart. You've seen this before, okay. So for this one, the, the Gantt chart, um, yeah, I find it useful for projects with dependencies. I, don't rec I do not recommend Roam for this because it doesn't have an automatic way of displaying a Gantt chart and then you know just adding them based on you know the dependencies. But a lot of the project management, you know, task collaboration tools like Asana, Jira, ClickUp, Monday have inbuilt uh, features to allow you to uh, add dependencies and visualize them as a grant chart. So um, you just choose depending on your type of project. For me, it's normally the milestone chart in the calendar. So the estimation techniques. So if it's if it's your, I should add, should move this here. A key consideration as well is like how important is the schedule in your project. So one kind of project which is which is very schedule uh, rigid is an an event because you're essentially telling everyone. So let's show up at the same time at the same place or maybe now in the same zoom room and then so for that so you have to set the time there and all of the activities converge towards that day towards that, that uh, hour um, other projects are more scope dependent meaning you are you're flexible in terms of time as long as you complete the scope the project i'm doing right now which is to bring uh, genetic sequencing of SARS-CoV-2 to the developed to developed countries is more scope rigid than um, time rigid. So we don't have a deadline. We want to do it as soon as possible, but um, the scope is clear. We need to do that. So if your most important um, constraint is time, estimation techniques for the time duration it becomes more important. So what they normally use is actually just ask, asking someone who's done a similar project before, um, but could also do um, bottom-up estimating, or you know you could ask a a someone who's done it before for an analogous cost estimate, like uh, you know the overall duration of the project that they did similar to yours or she did similar to yours or bottom up, bottom up. So you have your task lists of tasks, your WBS and you, all, you line them up in your bar chart, your Gantt chart uh, or your calendar and you ask how long each takes. And then based on the dependencies, you could, uh, you could see a, um, or you could build a Gantt chart uh, with that. You could also use uh, formula from historical data. So I think this is more applicable to like um, things which have a an input which have a predictable outcome in terms of project duration. For instance, the input of like how a large a building is, is pretty correlated, I imagine, to how long it takes to build that building. Uh, perhaps other other which all this other factors would apply there as well. But for an experienced company who does a certain kind of project, they could predict how long a project takes based on certain inputs, um, maybe square meters in a building or something like that for a specific, very specific type of building. So you could, uh, I imagine you could, you could, um, uh, estimate that. So I've never done a project actually with this kind of uh, thing. So there's also a 
uh, something called the three-point estimating, you know, which is just an average of the optimistic, the pessimistic, and the most likely duration. So, um, uh, can you can you explain T zero TM TP? This is the optimistic time, most likely time, and pessimistic time it takes to complete a task. So for each task, you do an estimate, three, three point estimates of three points, and really just an average. Okay. It's, so, it's really a rule of thumb. Rule of thumb, yeah. Yeah, just to maybe make it more, I guess, uh, to consider the different scenarios, because if the pessimistic is so huge, you know, so you will be able to take, um, take into consideration that uh, pessimistic scenario in your estimates. Um, an important aspect as well in project uh, schedule management is how do you collaborate with your team in terms of tasks? So, and then a key part, part there is like the tool that you're using. So the way I look at this is that you want to select a tool which shows you a report or a view which shows tasks in a certain time frame. So for instance, what are the tasks we need to do next week and two weeks from now? And then I also wanna see tasks per person. And then I also wanna see tasks per person per time, per time frame. So in Rome, you know, this is pretty, uh, this is built in. Um, you just need to, create a page of uh, certain, you know, uh, time durations, and then, you know, the tasks there, and then you put the people there. So you could already filter the link references easily uh, for all, for each of these reports. But, uh, you know, all the other task management systems or project management um, team software have these features. What uh, Rome doesn't have, uh, but this is common to most of these um, teamwork software, project teamwork software, is automated sequencing based on the, what you call this, the dependencies. So you just uh, put your all your tasks there and then you tell the software which is dependent on what task and it will and then you put there the duration for each task and then it will line them up and then um, also so there's this concept of critical path so these are the the tasks in your project which if delayed will delay the entire project so this is computed by the software, so the latest one I use to do this is ClickUp. And um, yeah, it just makes you focus on what are the tasks that you need to, it's like the 80-20, you know, like this is the 20% of the, all the tasks that they need to focus on because if this, these are delayed, the whole project is delayed. And then also the, if you anticipate a lot of a task level discussion, so these, a lot of these tools also facilitate that. Like in Trello, you know, one task could be one card or one task could be one to do within a card and you could make, you could do your discussions there. You could also, of course, do this in multi, uh, multiplayer room, but you know, you, a lot of the, these features have has to be built um, by the community. So I don't think they're there yet. Um, so a key takeaway for me really. I'm just Go ahead, Bruno. I'm just surprised. I have never used ClickUp, but it's a really rather, rather new tool in the in the field. Uh, ClickUp has all these features are built in ClickUp already. Yes. These are very common features. Yeah, but I, I, I thought ClickUp was more like a, a, a tool like a Google Doc or Google uh, or Excel. So. I didn't yeah. know it had so many features. Yeah, it's okay. actually, it starts, it's primarily, in at least how I was introduced to it, it's primarily a project management tool, which has some uh, documents. So instead of having your project documents in your 
Google Doc or your Dropbox, it's all in one place. So click up. Um, yeah, that's, that was the latest project management tool I experimented with. The, 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 the problem with this kind of um, project management style is that you're assuming that you know how long tasks takes. So this is for known projects with known, um, what you call this, tasks. So like the project I'm doing right now, you know, no one has done this project in the, before. So there's no, there's no way to know uh, prior to actually doing it, what are the actual tasks and you know, how long they will take. So um, yeah, so uh, it's, I couldn't do this in this current project I'm doing. Um, but I guess, uh, you know, building things, this would be pretty appropriate. I mean, this is how most project management software is built. Um, so if, if you have no questions on the conceptual part here, Bruno, uh, I could go into the, the, the demo. Mm -hmm. I like your uh, your definition of uh, focus manage of, of schedule as being focus management. Uh, how do you uh, make the transition between this that you are talking about and the actual focus? Yeah, I'll, um, um... how does it happen? Because. Uh, Imagine if you are in a larger team, there will be a lot of meetings, there will be a learning time, you have to assemble the required uh, knowledge and the required tools before you can start a task. So there are many occasions where the task is actually not starting when you say it starts, but it starts uh, a little bit later, a little bit before, because there are uh, so how do you uh, translate from uh, uh, from the, the project manager point of view how do you translate the fact that you say this is going to take place on week 34 and it actually takes place on week 34 mm -hmm. how, how do you make the, the focus possible yeah let me show you um, how it looks like in in Rome or how I planned it out in Rome and then okay. how how it actually happens or like what, what what I'm trying to do with myself and my teammates so let me just show you the so this is the project okay. we've been talking about this uh, crowdfunding project um, so I just started doing the the schedule management plan here let me place this in the sidebar And uh, the schedule plan here. So actually, the um, this schedule is just a the some work uh, packages which I block referenced here. So this is the plan uh, on the week of April April twenty six. We will focus on creation of the video creation and design of the implementation, implementation landing page is one. And then the week of uh, May 3rd, we will focus on the outreach, particularly the listing the stakeholders and getting each project man member to uh, do the outreach. So this is the plan. So how do you actually make this happen? So in an organization, in an organization, you are really, uh, even with yourself, you are competing with all so many other distractions or other projects or other kinds of work. So it's so every every time you need to to pitch to your team and even to yourself that hey this is a priority. So this project has to win that battle of winning hearts and minds so that they put their time into their project. So and it's a, a key a key, what you call this, part of that is to make it easy for them. So they're not just they're not just saying, okay, I will dedicate time to this project. You're making it easy for them to say, I will dedicate X amount of hours to do this, to do this particular task this week. 
So that's just my job as a project manager to tell them to make it easy for them. So this week for this project, you're doing your job if you are doing this particular tasks. So that's also uh, it's, it's also true for myself if I am the main resource in this project. So this week, if I'm going to move this project forward, this is the one thing I need to do, or these are the few things I need to do to bring this project forward. So the other, you're also competing with your other tasks. So you want them to, okay, don't think about these other tasks yet. You know, like next week, let's just think about the, the video. Don't worry about the, you know, outreach to our uh, uh, stakeholders yet. So let's just focus on getting the video done and let's get getting, let's focus on getting the landing page done. So did that answer your question, Bruno? Hello, Bruno. Yes, it's interesting. I wrote what you said. Uh, I think it's a, it's an interesting uh, simplified uh, guideline. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so what happens during that actual week? Uh, so this is why I like using Ruo for this. Because imagine, so I have the, these two projects in this graph, but you know, my actual graph has maybe like, uh, you know, I have four major projects ongoing right now and uh, other small projects. So I just focus on what's up, what appears in my graph. So this is a, these are messages from my past self. So my past self, so when I, when I arrive on April 26, I have some messages from my past self. These are like, okay, I have to focus on this. Okay, we'll do the video. We'll do the landing page and for my other project. So I will have to um, deliver, prepare for this um, uh, discussion on quality checklists. So these are the two things I need to, to work on this week. So my, my in my workflow, Mondays is the planning day. So I always schedule this, th these things up here on Mondays. Um, yeah, so this... Uh, that's basically it, uh, Bruno. Any, any other questions regarding schedule man management? No, I'm just uh, just a second. I'm just writing. Something for me. Um, Okay, so let's imagine if you have to re reschedule, because this is what this is happening regularly. You would just drag drop the task between the the different blocks. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So, for instance, uh, you know, this is just imagine. a shift shift command and then down up. So, in case like okay, okay something happened there, so we have to move this. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. All right. So you just move the block reference and you move it yep. before or between the weeks. Yes. And the mention uh, eighty twenty. That's uh, a label you give to the tasks which are likely to be in the critical pass. Yes. Um. For this project, it's my critical. It's. It's hard to know what are the critical what's the critical path for this project because I don't know yet how long each thing would take and how important they are. So the eighty twenty is more of like these are the if I just do these things, the project will most likely be successful. And if I if I fail doing them, the project will most likely fail. So that's basically it's like this is I want to focus on these things. So you know it's like I have other things to do. So if push comes to shove, I just need to complete these things. So could I could I could you say something like in a project where the scope is more important than the schedule, the 8020 is the way to flag what you should focus on in priority. Yes, the tasks, the work packages, or the yeah, the aspects or the part yeah, of your yeah. 
that needs to be done in priority so that the scope of the project is achieved. Yes, yes. And the, the, the task or work packages which are not flag 8020 are everything which uh, has to be done, but will not impact the fact that the project is finished or not. Yes, it's, uh, it may lower the quality, but it will not kill the project. It will not kill the project and it could maybe be done a little after most of the work is done. Yeah, you could, uh, it, yeah. It's done one week or two weeks later, it will not kill the project. Yep, yeah. Yeah, or you, you could you fail to, yeah. Or it will lower the quality, you know, if you don't get to do it. Or you could just do it, you know, not in, uh, what you call this, not with the in the best way possible. You know, you could just, you know, because you don't have time to do it. So, well, what can you do? So, but these ones, which I place A to 20, is like I'm going all in. It's like I have to do this the best way possible. Very good. Cool. Okay. I, I think uh, I, I'm done with my questions. Okay. Um, that, was, that, we, that was the topic of, the, of this week, yes? Yes, yes. So I'll stop recording now. And uh, if you have uh, more questions, uh, which you don't want to be in the recording, we could discuss it. Uh, uh, we could discuss okay. this after this.